Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Welcome to our live video series. Today we're gonna to take a close look at what happens to be the 2021 Hyundai Ioniq Hybrid. Now I say 2021 because you'll notice that just two days ago, we did the Hyundai Elantra Hybrid as well. That happened to be a 2022. Well, it is September of 2021. And currently if you are shopping for a vehicle, at the Hyundai dealership, you're gonna see 2022 Elantra Hybrid and 2021 um, Ionic Hybrid as the same model year. They're both gonna be on the dealership lot at the same time. So that's why this one happens to be 2021, but it's the current model year comparing to the 2022 Elantra that we did just the other day, Elantra Hybrid. So here's what we're gonna do. If you are watching for the very first time, uh, you can skip ahead to that three minute mark and uh, that'll be where we have the content. If you're live with us, you can't skip ahead and that's okay. We'll show those who wanna know how to join us live and uh, we'll cover some news and some notes, including some hybrid news coming up. So give us a second here. We'll uh, let our crowd learn how to join us. Here's how you do it. You go uh, weekdays, two o'clock Eastern time and uh, you find our YouTube page and you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock, which is what I'm doing right now. And we had a little video down here that's just sort of a standard video. It will change to this video that you see right here, which is our live video. You click on that live video, you'll have to watch an ad. And in the meantime, I'm gonna run a quick ad ourselves. If you are looking for a car in Ontario, connect with me. You can connect with me after this video. There'll be a link in the description. That'll take you to um, me. And <laughs> I'm terrible at running ads. Anyways, I can hook you up with our dealers, uh, Brantford Hyundai, Owen Sound Hyundai, and of course, Brantford Kia. Those are the two, three dealers that support our channel. And it would be great if you could support them. All right, so what's going on today? Let me just skip this ad for myself. Oh, I missed it. Gotta wait five more seconds for the second ad. All right, a couple people saying hello. Thank you for commenting. That lets me know that everything's working and hello to you as well. All right, skip that ad. There we go. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, in the news, I guess, I think, yeah, I think you guys uh, heard that we're doing the um, Sorento PHEV. It should be here this month in September. Very, very last days of September. So again, everything's crazy in the automotive industry. So is that going to be here? I don't know, um, but it's scheduled to be here at the end of this month. So the Sorento PHEV could be the last couple days of the month. We'll do that. Uh, which is a brand new car for us. So we're pretty excited about that. It will be an all-wheel drive model, which is exciting. And it will probably be a top trim model, which is also exciting. Uh, to, no, sorry, Monday. Monday, we will be doing the Tucson N-Line. Now, you guys have been asking for this for a while, the Hyundai Tucson N-Line. Uh, it just arrived today, so they're going to get that uh, ready for me. And I will have that Monday at 2 o'clock live. So we've got a lot of new vehicles starting to come in now. We're still looking to do more Santa Cruz videos, other things. Uh, Ionic 5 could show up next month. So a lot of stuff going on. And if you want to see any of these new vehicles, hit the subscribe button. That will help you out. And it helps me out as well. But it will help you see what you want to see. And, of course... Um, yeah, that'll help out. So here we are, three minute mark. All right, everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Today we're looking at the Kia, oh, no, not the Kia, oh boy, Kia badge. I work at the Kia dealer. It's where I film, the Kia dealership. We are at the, we are with the Hyundai Ionic, Hyundai Ionic uh, Hybrid. I just was talking about the Ionic 5, so sorry about that. So today we're gonna look at this car really in depth, and this one is surprisingly good in some ways. And we're gonna show you some of those surprises there uh, as we go through it. And one of the key things I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna compare it to the Hyundai Elantra hybrid that we just looked at two days ago. So that video is already up on our YouTube channel. You can search Kia Hyundai channel, Hyundai Elantra hybrid, and you'll find it. Um, and you can compare the two of them. And somebody asked me which one I would prefer. So I will answer that question at the end of this video. That's what's going on. If you haven't hit the like button, some of my regulars, you're willing to hit it right away. Some of you are gonna wait for me to earn it. I totally get it. Let's see if we can get to about 45 likes today. So if we could hit that early, that'd be great. All right, let's jump in and show you very quickly what's going on with the trim lines. So here's where we are on the trim lines. The Ionic Hybrid starts at the Essential model, goes to Preferred and goes to Ultimate. We have a Preferred with us today. Now this is gonna make things a little bit unfair because there is a 25-ish thousand dollar model. And when we had the Elantra Hybrid in here, we looked at the 25-ish thousand dollar Elantra Hybrid. So we are a little bit up. Now I think it's okay because for a lot of people, if one is affordable, the other one will be affordable as well. And to be very blunt, inventory is tight right now. So we're gonna compare the best we can with what we have. Uh, but do keep in mind that this is one slight step above uh, the Elantra in price. And uh, 
as far as the one we reviewed now it's in between or it's around the same price as the other lantra upper level but we haven't reviewed that on video yet so we'll leave it there all right none of that makes sense to anybody who cares right here we go let's go through the car first of all here is your key a little bit older style key on this we've updated some of our hyundai keys since then uh nothing wrong with this one uh but just a little bit uh, different than we have on some of the newer cars and that's no big deal lock unlock this when it says hold it does not pop the trunk like a powered trunk. If you had a powered tailgate on some of our models that used to pop the trunk, all this does is unlock the trunk. So just the trunk. So you can hold that button, it'll unlock just the trunk. Uh, pro tip, I always advise, don't do that. Just unlock the whole car. That way, if something goes wrong where you lock the keys in the car, which is hard to do, but if it does, you can uh, also unlock it through the other door. So there you go. The nice thing about this key is I can throw it in my pocket and I don't take it out the rest of the video because this whole car is keyless entry. Now, let's talk about a couple of things I like. We're gonna show you lighting in the rest of this video at the end. And uh, it is LED lighting on this car. You couldn't get that in the Elantra. And uh, you'll have some nice things in the back seat, some pros and cons. Some things that I really like in this back seat and other things that the Elantra does better. Same thing with trunk space. We're gonna show you some differences there. But let's start out by jumping in here. And while we take a look here, I've got the sunroof open for a change. Usually I have it shut, but I have it open mostly because it was hot in here and that's a nice way to cool down the cars in this air conditioned room. Uh, but you do have a sunroof in this preferred model, which is again, one reason to move to the preferred model from the essential model. You do have a manual seat here and they are cloth. They have a nice, uh, almost a, I don't know if it's a denim looking material. It's just kind of a nice uh, material. There's a little bit of a pattern in the center here, which is different than the rest. Uh, a little bit easier to see with the naked eye than probably on camera, but just a nice cloth. Although you do have leather wrap steering wheel and um, a nice leather wrap gear shift as well in here. Jumping in here, I'm gonna turn the vehicle to the on position, but I'm not gonna start it. And of course, what that does is it um, gives you um, all the warning lights still on. Let me just turn this off for a second. So all the warning lights will be on and that's just because uh, we're trying to keep the fumes down to a minimum while we're inside the building here. All right, so taking a look here, uh, when we talk about Elantra versus this, which one do you prefer? Well, they're very similar. I would say that I prefer this um, style of gauges. I find the lettering to be a little bit larger. However, the Elantra is probably a little bit more stylistically nice. Uh, you still have your eco gauge here, which is sort of a bar graph as opposed to the dial in the Elantra. But this screen is the same. And you can see there's a lot of different screens in here. You can look at a lot of different things. Um, tire pressure monitors, of course, in this car, lane keeping assist, but not lane follow assist. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. And uh, there's all your settings. What's nice about it over here, ignore fuel efficiency numbers, first of all, because whatever you're seeing here is uh, probably not accurate. Yeah, 4.10, that would be probably fairly accurate. 4.7, so maybe the fuel efficiency, yeah, 3.9. So those are average fuel efficiency numbers for this car based on the trips it's done. Uh, usually a dealership car is very poor in mileage because they idle, do various things. Of course, sometimes hybrids show tr more true mileage because they don't idle as much. Um, they can sit around and sort of deal with our dealership things of taking pictures, showing customers, warming up, cooling down for customers, those kinds of things. Uh, but yeah, nice uh, fuel economy numbers that are probably pretty accurate in that uh, area there. One thing I like to do is just keep this on the speedometer as well, but you can do anything you want. Uh, and then of course you have temperature gauge over there, fuel gauge. We are almost out of fuel, one bar left and I still have 91 kilometers. Fun fact, I drove across town today I had 91 kilometers when I started. I had 91 kilometers when I got here. It's uh, probably about seven or eight kilometers between the two dealerships, one, the Hyundai dealership where I picked up this car. And of course we film in our Brantford Kia studios here. So um, you can really play with the mileage. And one of the cool ways you can do that is by using these, whoops, let's zoom back out. Come on camera, camera's getting mad at me here. There we go. Uh, by using these paddle shifters. Why? Because they are not actually paddle shifters. This is one of those rare things that happens in electric vehicles and hybrids where all, all of our electric vehicles, Hyundai and Kia electric vehicles, they have the paddle shifters that work as regenerative braking paddles. What does that mean? Basically, as you tap the plus and minus, it's going to increase or decrease the amount of braking that happens as you release the throttle. So if you've ever driven an electric car, um, most electric cars, when you release the throttle, it, it brings in some level of braking that doesn't use the in-wheel brakes, but just uses the electric motor sort of in reverse. So instead of the motor driving the wheels, the wheels drive the motor, which then it puts the um, power back into the battery. Um, having these paddles as gear shift paddles in a hybrid car doesn't make a ton of sense. Having them as regenerative paddles really kind of intrigues me because of course in my electric car that I drive every single day, I use those paddles quite a bit to create some extra braking without using wheel brakes, which of course puts power back in the battery. 
On a hybrid, it works differently because you have a six-speed automatic or six-speed automatic transmission tied to a gasoline engine that of course when you decelerate it still has to cycle through its gears let's say we're in fifth or sixth gear and i have to it has to cycle down uh so it works interestingly when you increase regenerative braking in these cars because it allows the car to slow down and it's not quite as linear as it would be in a gas model because of course as the engine's breaking down or as the engine is shifting down to create some engine braking uh, the regenerative paddles are also working in tandem with that to create some braking. What does this mean in general? Well, most hybrids, um, and Toyota, I'm looking at you, we let off the throttle, it just coasts and coasts and coasts and coasts and coasts and coasts and coasts until you have to tap your brake pedal. When you tap your brake pedal on most hybrids, um, usually your regenerative braking kicks in first, but then your wheel brakes will kick in at some point, and there's a transition there. Uh, when you use just the paddle shifters, you can let off the gas and only regenerative braking will be used. And I like it. I'm used to driving an electric car that has a fairly heavy amount of regenerative braking, which puts power back into the battery. And this car can now drive like that and you can customize it as you drive. And if I'm totally confusing you, basically what it means is these paddles can add to your range and they make the drive make more sense. If you want to coast, you can. If you want to let off the throttle and have, you know, significant, but, you know, not significant, but a, a moderate amount of um, deceleration, a little bit more than a gas car, it'd be like going from fifth gear to third gear in a manual transmission, um, where it gives you that bit of uh, braking and even more so. Um, those paddles are really good for giving you some control over that. I know I went too long on this. It just makes a lot of sense that they're there. And it's one thing I wish I had. The Elantra didn't have these as an option. Uh, Kia Nero doesn't have this as an option. Kia Nero is built on the same platform as this. So we look down here while we're here. Cruise control's in here. This car does not have the lane follow assist that the Elantra had. Uh, I do prefer that. This car is capable, of course, of steering itself a little bit as it has the lane keeping assist, which can steer yourself within the lane markers as necessary. Lane follow assist holds centered in the lane, and this particular car doesn't have that. So win for the Elantra on having the uh, lane follow assist, win for the Ionic on having these paddle shifters there from the driver's seat. So we've got automatic headlights there. Again, nice step up on this trim line. You have the LED lights, which we'll show you a little bit later. My room lights went out because it's being blocked. Now let's move over to here. Satellite radio and FM radio and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Same thing we just showed you in the Elantra. And again, wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. So you've got some nice tech in this car. That's the combination of tech that I think most people are looking for. Um, the wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay means that you can bring up your Google Maps or your Apple Maps in here as if it's built-in navigation. I think that's a really strong point. And then you also have a little bit of a win here for your climate system. It is a dual zone system, so you can customize left side, right side, different temperatures. And uh, of course the fans are gonna blow fairly hard now. I can go driver only. As you know, I kind of make fun of the driver only mode in our electric vehicles because it saves you maybe a kilometer, two kilometers of range on, on, in most cases. Uh, in a hybrid vehicle, driver only mode can really help you out. Um, as you know, a lot of vehicles, come on camera, a lot of our hybrid vehicles, when you're running that fan, that's the determining factor, or if you're using your heat out of the engine, that can be the determining factor on whether it uses the gasoline engine or whether it just stays on battery. So being able to cut back the amount of air that you have blowing through by putting it on driver only mode or drawing less heat off the engine to only give the driver fans uh, or the driver vents some of that heat, that can actually in a hybrid preserve you some of that gasoline engine running and actually preserve you quite a bit of fuel. So uh, kudos for the driver only mode on the hybrids although on EVs makes very little difference to most people's range. So um, nice to have that dual zone temperature control, which again, you can when you have it on driver only, that right side temperature comes over, so you can very quickly tell, not only is the driver only lit, gone, uh, cut, lit up, uh, you also have 22 degrees there, and you don't see the 22 degrees there. So whatever temperature you want, but yeah, good little automatic system here. I like it quite a bit. Coming down further, 212 volts and a USB. Personally, I'd like to see an extra USB in there uh, so that if you had to charge extra devices, you could and without getting an adapter, but this is what they do on these cars and that's fine. Coming down here, six-speed automatic transmission. You do have the ability to put it uh, into drive, tap it this way, which automatically puts it in sport mode and it gives you a couple little options, but you can also switch your own gears there. So why would you want to do that? Well, this car is set up as an eco-friendly car. It is eco mode pretty much only. Now, when I move it this way to manually shift my own gears, let me show you what happens in the uh, steering column area or in the um, 
the main display here, the main cluster. So ready, I'm gonna pull it to the driver's side now. I do that and right away I get a tachometer, which is pretty cool. Um, which gives you just an extra little gauge that you would want if you were shifting your own gears. You want to see where you are in the rev range, and that does make it more sporty. Uh, this just makes it sport mode. You can drive it like an automatic right here, but if you were to choose your own gear, see that S up top? Now it says 1. Um, you can switch that over from S to uh, first gear. It won't go into second gear unless we're driving, uh, but you do have the option to shift your own gears, which I think is a nice uh, feature to have in a hybrid. It gives you a little bit more driver engagement. Put that back over to reverse and let's flip around here. You'll hear that hybrid beeping. Oh, let's zoom back out again. Uh, you can hear that beeping. I'm not sure if you can hear it on camera, but you do have um, backup beeping just like you would on an electric car because it can back up without a gasoline engine running and it needs to make a tiny bit of noise. You can see here the blue line will stay straight with the vehicle. The uh, yellow and red gives you a general guidance of which way you're going. So that's kind of nice to have. The blue line, you just line that up with the parking space you're backing into. You back right in, you'll be dead center in there. So nice feature there, a nice clear backup camera. Put the car in park, come back down here, electronic parking brake here with the auto hold function, heated seats, or as I like to call them, rump roasters, and a heated steering wheel. Now, I want to say something really quickly. Having cloth seats in a car like this is a big advantage with the heated seats, and this matters more in a hybrid than any other car. Leather seats, as you know, they take longer to warm up. It also takes longer for that heating element to get through that leather to warm it up. Cloth seats warm up very, very quickly when you have heated seats, and what that does in a hybrid is allows you to run the air conditioning or the climate system a little bit lower temperature, or sorry, the heating uh, in the winter, a little bit lower temperature. So let's say you like it 22 degrees Celsius, you can bring it down to uh, 20 Celsius, be just as comfortable, and that will of course save the engine from running. The less heat you use in the winter, the uh, less that's gonna run. And uh, just a couple degrees difference makes a big difference there. So heated seats, rump roasters, good idea there. And we're gonna look up for a second while we're here and oops, let's go this way. And you can see you have a sunroof there. Nicely centered over my nice balding head so I can get that nice tan that I'm looking for. While we're looking up over here, you also have uh, Blue Link. Blue Link is of course the, um, uh, you've, or sorry, it's the app on your phone which allows you to uh, do a whole bunch of things. Remote start the car, all kinds of different things. One thing the Elantra has advantage of is that remote starting function is available on that newer style key fob. Remember we talked about the key fob earlier? Newer style key fob does have remote start. All right. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take your questions. We're going to come back, do rear seat and trunk space. We'll go through some of the details. I want to show you lighting in this car as well. A couple of little other features. There are a couple of features in the rear seat that may make you tilt towards this car versus another car. So we'll talk about that as well. If you have questions, ask them right now. Greetings from Mesa, Arizona. That's pretty cool. Hello, Arizona. Uh, so ask your questions right now. we got a few less people on so I can get to all your questions and uh, we'll go through. All right, turn the car off. I'm going to walk over to my motion sensor light which is blocked by a minivan right now. Turn the lights back on here, there we go. All right, let's flip the camera around for a second. You can look at this. I really like the styling of the Ionic right now. These wheels, although they're eco wheels, they look pretty cool in person. We're gonna take a look. Actually, we'll just quickly show you right now. They've got some texture to them. And uh, I just think they look cool in person. They're um, certainly eco-friendly wheels, aerodynamic family wheels. Not everybody likes that style, but uh, out of all the styles of eco wheels, these ones look pretty cool to me. All right, flipping back around here. Like I said, just a few of us on here. We're looking for 40 likes today. It's gonna be a tough one to get there. And that's okay. This is a car that doesn't draw a ton of attention. Some of these uh, hybrid cars, but we're gonna do our best to show those who wanna know everything that they can see. Is the Carnival, Carnival delivery or another video? Carnival is uh, scheduled to be delivered very soon now, I believe. Um, so that is a delivery in here. Okay, but I have done Carnival videos and I will do a Carnival video as early as next week if you guys want, just let me know. Okay, I was thinking of buying this car, not sure if it's the Essential or the pref Preferred model, uh, big difference. Okay, so Essential and Preferred, the one thing I really like in the Preferred uh, a couple things, sunroof, LED lights, and a rear, rear seat feature, which I'm about to show you in just a second. So we'll go over that one, that makes some sense. Uh, why does it take so long for the Sportage to be announced for North America? Uh, the Sportage has been announced for North America, but it is not, um, the details haven't been released, so it will be released. It's probably not due to actually hit here uh, till about March of next year, and that's assuming that the automotive world works normally. Um, it's not normal right now, so. Was the cost of replacement of a SHSG belt? Uh, I do not know that. I do not know the cost of replacement. We'll have to look that up. Do the rear back seats backs fold down? We'll show you that in a second. They do. 
What is the cool name for the heated steering wheel? Yeah, we do. I, I have other names that I don't use on video for heated seats, ventilated seats, um, those kinds of things. So we should think of something there. All right. <laughs> okay, mitten warmers as you're calling them, eh? All right. Okay, so let's dig in here. Not a whole lot of questions here, but I did go through there. Rear seats. Let's start talking about the rear seats. In the Elantra, I had an immense amount of legroom. You are going to have a little bit less legroom here, and I think a little bit less headroom in this car. But there may be a reason why you still want this rear seat over the Elantra rear seat. First of all, you've got the cup holders in the, in the center there, armrest. Let me show you getting in and out of the vehicle as we do this. Nice and easy to get in and out of. All right, as I said, a little bit less headroom here, but again, I'm a six footer sitting behind a six footer. So that may, you know, maybe you don't have a six footer. I will say that if I lean all the way back, I do come in contact with the roof here. So much taller people than me, and I sit fairly tall in a car, uh, but much taller people than me, this is gonna be a little bit less space. The Elantra might give you more option there. Um, over here, leg room is less. It's still good but it is less. Again, I'm a six footer sitting behind a six footer. So why is this seat better if it has less headroom, less leg room? And the answer is very simple over here. We're gonna show you why you should buy the preferred model over the essential model. This right here, rump roasters, oh, the car's off. Rump roasters in the rear seats. Now that's seat bottom only, but you do have rump roasters in the rear seat, which is a really nice feature to have, again, on these cloth seats. Um, again, if you wanna just save a little bit of fuel, couple degrees less in the climate system. Everybody uses the rump roasters and uh, you will save that gasoline engine from coming on as quickly. So pretty cool. Is this a plug-in hybrid or no? This one is not the plug-in hybrid. So no plug-in at all. You just drive it like a normal gasoline vehicle. The electric motor can charge on its own and uh, it will just assist when needed and charge when needed and it gives you fantastic fuel mileage. All right, let's jump out of the rear seat here. Again, rump roasters in the rear. Pretty, uh, pretty good... Uh, system in a car at this price point of any kind, but of course makes a lot of sense in a hybrid. All right, let's show you the trunk now. Come on camera, there we go. Overall, the design of this car has changed a few times, a little tiny bit over time. Um, it's a pretty sleek look. I don't mind it. There is a split window here. Not everybody loves that, which again is why the, you may want to consider the Elantra instead. Elantra and this share a powertrain essentially, so uh, that matters. Now, do the seats fold down? Yes, they do. And that big advantage is this uh, panel comes out, those seats fold down, and then you have a very large opening to put like a dishwasher from Home Depot. You could grab that and take it home. You could fit those kinds of things here. You're not gonna fit that in the Elantra. However, from here down, that area down, the Elantra might be a little bit larger. And the way you can compare is you can skip ahead head in the uh, Elantra video that we did a couple days ago, Elantra hybrid video, and see how the teddy bear fits in that one. As soon as you see the teddy bear, you'll know, compared to this one. He does have less belly space in here than he had in the Elantra. He also has a little bit less leg room, head room in here when I sit him there. And you could put two teddies side by side in the Elantra, so you can't do that here. Now, overall trunk volume by liters, this car is probably going to have more. I haven't actually checked that, but because we could load this up to the ceiling and you would have a lot. However, if you want to keep that below the rear seat height, the Elantra might be a little bit larger. So overall trunk volume, probably bigger here, but practical volume underneath the rear seat area, a little bit more in the Elantra. Just something to keep in mind if you're comparing the two cars. Uh, this cargo blind, I should say, works very well. It's in a track the whole way down which I kind of like. It just makes it easier to use, especially one-handed like I just did there. Um, just kind of nice to just keep everything nicely in line, which not a lot of cars have that. They have the hook at the end and there. I think this works really well. All right, we're gonna throw Teddy Bear over here on the ground again. He'll get his chair later. And I wanna show you lighting on this car and then we can wrap it up. You can see backup camera is right there by the Hyundai logo there. And uh, let's show you lighting. We'll have to turn the car to the on position. And then we'll probably wrap this up. All right, headlights are now on. There is an automatic setting to the headlights. Coming across here, LED lights in the front. They've been redesigned over some of the previous model years. Now, uh, in the regular daytime running lights, you will see daytime running lights down here that will be on. Now that the headlights are on, those are off. And you have a nice bright headlight that comes in nice and bright. If you flip around here, you can see it's a fairly sharp cutoff. I, as you know, if you've watched me regularly, am a big fan of LED headlights. They are nice and bright. The color is nice. It's easy to identify things. And a uh, fairly sharp cutoff is pretty good. Uh, I think you'll enjoy these headlights if you can spring for this trim over a lower trim or maybe even over the Elantra. Down on this side, 
you've got the taillights. Now they'll appear to be blinking because some LED lights interact with the camera and they appear to be blinking. They're of course not blinking in real life, uh, but they're pretty cool looking uh, to me as well. A very futuristic kind of look here overall as well. Somebody just asked me to fold down at least one of the seat backs. So let's just do that on this side here. And I don't know if that helps there, but you've got quite a bit of space. We'll pop the trunk just one more time so you can see. The catch being that, of course, that uh, panel would have to be removed. It's very quick to do that, but I'm not going to do that because I need two hands to do it correctly. But you can see the massive space you would have here. A lot of people ask me if you could sleep in here. I suppose you could, but you're going to be a little uncomfortable. It's a little bit of an incline there, um, and there is a little dip there. You'd have to just fill it up with pillows. And again, you guys sleep in cars sometimes. I'm not. Okay. Oh, so somebody said thank you for helping with my wireless charging problem. So if that was me, then I'm happy I worked it out for you. Oh, okay. I'm not sure who did that, but I'm glad that worked out. All right. We are 25 minutes into this video. If there's something you want to know about this car, feel free to let me know. We did a full Elantra review just the other day. Um, I didn't go into a whole lot of details more here than there, uh, but you can let me know if you like this. We got 29 likes. There's still 25 of you on. Not all of you were on since the beginning. So if you guys want to hit the like button, 30 likes. Uh, we were going for 40. I don't know if that's unrealistic on a Friday on a hybrid car that's been out for a little while. Uh, but here's the thing I want you guys to know. If you're interested in hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles or any kind of Kia or Hyundai vehicle in general, um, we don't, we're not a review channel. So we will pull vehicles in again and again and again. And that's why we have this vehicle. And even though it's not brand new, it's not on the um, auto journalist circuit right now, we will pull it in because you want to see it up close. So it's another reason to subscribe to our channel if that's something you're interested in. And uh, if not, hey, yeah, that's cool. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right, let's flip it around to that. I'm just going to double check to see if I've missed any comments. If I have, I'll try to get to them. And it does have a two level floor like some others, not on this one. The uh, two level floors are more of a firm floor. This is a little bit thinner thing. So it's just down where it was and that's where it is. There is an inflator kit underneath, uh, but not so much. The Elantra of course had a spare tire. This one has an inflator kit. You could probably get the um, spare tire as an accessory in this car if that's what you wanted. So there's that. Tell it's a nice opening size. Some small cars have really tiny doors that high up. I always think how inconvenient that would be. Yeah, I really like hatchback styles. And I, I just want to say as well, when you do load your cargo in here, you do have an almost wagon like it. It gives the illusion of a sedan, like it curls down. But if you look, follow the line, a square wagon wouldn't be a whole lot higher. So it's a nice little design there. It is a very aerodynamic design, but it also gives a lot of space. So when will we see the Ionic 5? That's a great question. So I've seen documents that say we could see a dealer unit as early as October. Everything's up in the air right now. Uh, you probably won't be able to buy one until later than October, and a lot of the early orders will be, will be sold orders. It may be something you have to order. Trust me, as soon as we can get one, in here in our, in our uh, video bay, we'll have it in here. We'll have it in here for several days. We follow EVs. I'm a huge EV hybrid fan. I've owned hybrids in the past. I own an electric vehicle right now. Um, so we will definitely cover it in details. And our dealer group is a pretty uh, devoted dealer group. You can see... Uh, I don't know if they're here right now, but there's a Tesla Model Y just out. Uh, I don't know if we can see it over here. Tesla Model Y here at Brantford Kia right uh, there behind there. So um, we have the Tesla Model S in stock as well right now. So we carry used electric vehicles, new electric vehicles, and we cover them in detail. It's one of the things I really like to do. So we will absolutely cover those vehicles in detail, probably in more detail than anybody. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, feel free to subscribe. Same thing with uh, hybrids, PHEVs. Santa Fe Preferred Trend 2022, please, please, if you can. I believe I've done the Santa Fe Preferred Trend, um, but I will go look for that one again. Next week on Monday, we will be doing the um, Tucson N-Line, which we have not done yet. It just arrived today. Uh, they're going to have it ready for me to go on Monday, so we'll do that. And then Santa Fe Preferred Trend, yeah, it's a great one. We'll get that in there as well. And um, But I think I may have touched on it once, or maybe video already. Obviously, we'll pull it back in and do it if that's what you're interested in. All right, I think, guys, we are going to leave it right there. I want to thank everyone for watching. It's been a fun week. We made it to 34 likes, and that's okay. It's been a quiet video. Uh, again, if you're interested in these vehicles and you're in Ontario, connect with me. I'll connect you up with uh, Brantford Kia, uh, Brantford Hyundai, and we'll go through there. Uh, of course, we film at the Brantford Kia Studios. If there's a Kia you're interested in, you can, I can help you out with that as well. Uh, somebody said, can this tow a trailer? Great question. Uh, they're not rated to tow. So the short answer is, uh, I don't think I would. Uh, obviously, I'm sure some people have, but I have to tell you what the official thing is. They're not rated to tow, so we can't do that. All right. Mimi says...
See you in Teddy Monday. I will see you and Teddy Monday. Um, I picked up a new camper, which was a long, long story. So um, maybe that will make it into a video. I'm picking that up tomorrow morning. So I'm going to have a fun little weekend. All right. We'll talk to you soon and uh, enjoy your weekend. We'll see you Monday.